to mention to uh, important proposition here, kind of important, that uh, there is always a sub-game perfect Nash equilibrium that is to play a Nash equilibrium in every stage game. So it's always easy to find uh, a, a, a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. Just play the Nash equilibrium in every single one of them, every single stage of the game. There are actually more Nash equilibrium, like for example this one here, which is not simply pay, play a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, but to play uh, Nash equilibrium in every stage game is always a uh, subgame perfect, always use a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium of the whole game. to you than actually But also, okay, before this, do you guys have any questions? It seems to be a little bit lost with the going and coming back of some people that actually do that actually do Yes, Kate. On this stage game, there is only one. Because uh, the set of strategies it gets pretty big. So maybe you can have any other crazy things also becoming an actually I just ask for one where cooperation happens. Okay. And usually the trick to find the one where cooperation happens is trying to find the, the use the worst punishment in case cooperation does not happen. Let's find all the national people of this game. We can have some fun. In this case, to use a national people. The only sub game perfect. In this case here, what we found is structure things that are the The whole game. The only sub game perfect national people in this case is the fact in every single more than one Nash equilibrium, and how we can get uh, some game perfect Nash equilibrium if you have more than one Nash equilibrium. Repeat the game.
The whole game now is not just the matrix that is here. The correct way to represent the whole, you know, the whole game would be something like this. I have this matrix here of play, then I have an arrow, then I have the second round of the game again. Okay? And now I have the same option again. the only true pure strategy Nash equilibrium of this game. Which one is going to be played in the last period? Rohan. Right. Okay. No matter what happened here in the first period, let's do some backward inversion here. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
we have to compare two of the second, the second, the second. Now, if you move, if the two moves to the top, remember, like, when you are moving like, like this, we are only comparing the number after the columns. I know, sometimes it, it takes a while to see it here. If one is playing center, two wants to play center two. Because if you place top, it gets zero. So it's, it's comparing zero, four, and zero, and one's four. This stage game. Okay. Now, Ron, which one is going to be the result in the second period? 1-1 one, one or 4-4? Four, four? Of the last uh, in the last period, could be four four or could be one one. So this there is this ambiguity or is going to happen in the very end of the game. We could have an equilibrium, or in the in the very end of the game we play center center, or we could have an equilibrium, or in the very end of the game we play four four so far. We play bottom bottom, and both of them get one. Use this as a threat to enforce cooperation in the first uh, in the very first period.
So the idea is very similar to what it was before. Can you come up with a strategy where the first period cooperation occurs and it yields, this strategy yields a sub game perfect Nash equilibrium? Anyone can volunteer. Okay. I'm sorry? Four possible. <coughs> well, we have four possible strategies where they are playing Nash equilibrium, every possible stage game, right? But I'm not looking simple. Well, one possible strategy would be play center in the first one and play center in the second one no matter what. Another strategy would be play bottom in the first one and play center in the first one no matter what. Those are, those are, there, there are four possible combinations. Two starting here and two starting here. They use the same game definition. But I'm looking for something a little bit more complicated than that. I want a strategy such that in the very first period, both we get to here. Nine, nine. And this strategy is a sub-game for the next video. Yeah. Um, you go both go top. We'll go top in the first game, but... Oh, I, I think you're right, but I'm just sorry, like, my strategy is just tell okay. something about myself. Um, I play top in the first game. Go top period. in the first game, and if the other person goes center or bottom in the first game, you play bottom in the second game. Oh, almost, and uh, our strategy has to be a confusion plan. And what if they play top in the first period? Then you play top again. But that's not some game perfect Nash equilibrium because in the second one, you have to to play a Nash, a Nash equilibrium. You're almost there. That's it. If there's no compression in the first, you play bottom. But if there is compression in the first, what do you do? You play second. That's close to what it meant. And this strategy uses a big imperfect Nash equilibrium, where the first period is open at the top. Let me write down here the strategy by Matthew Webb. I'm oh, sorry, what's your name? Matthew. Matthew and Matthew come strategy is a contingent map from histories to actions. There's no history in the first round, so I just prescribe an action play top. 
you made a second round, you felt serve, top top, uh, I play center, and if I don't serve top top, I play bottom. Now let's solve this attack word in Dutch. In the last one, if we're both playing this strategy, it is an equilibrium because it, gets, it gives us center center or it gives us bottom bottom because we both observe the same thing. So in the last period, this is an equilibrium. Let's now get these payoffs from the second period to the first period. Okay, let's just look at this from the optics of the first period now. So if we both end up playing top top, we're going to get a nine from the from the first stage, plus the continuation of four in the next one. But if everything else happens, we're just going to get a continuation of one. now from the opt of the first game the best thing for me to do is to play top top in the first period. So we get cooperation the very first period. And moreover, now because we have two possible Nash equilibria, to threat with the worst possible Nash equilibria makes cooperation possible. And it is a supreme perfect Nash equilibrium because in the last period we will be playing one of these.
some of it's vague, you don't want to stay there. But if, they, if there are more than one Nash equilibrium in the stage game, cooperation may be achieved and some game perfect Nash equilibrium using the worst Nash equilibrium as a threat. guys to actually write down, put, seriously take into account, put yourself in a position that we are playing this game against each other, and if I ask you guys to write in the paper, top, center, or bottom, or T, C, or B in the first period, and then we're going to talk about, and then we're going to talk a little bit, then we're going to play in the second period. Okay? Do it. Write in the paper what you would do. I'm going to write here what I do. Let's play C, C again. Let's not play D, D. 
We are both better off if we play CC than if we play VB. Let bygones be bygones. No, what is in the past is in the past. There's no sense for us to hurt. Even if you don't trust me, I'm not going to defect. I'm going to play C again. There's no reason for me to lie. Let bygones be bygones. It's the past in the past. Now let's play again. Just write down there in the video. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to ask you guys to see what you've done, because maybe, oh, I, I just put C here again. I don't know if you guys have done. Maybe you thought, no, now I'm going to punish him, and I'm going to play B. That's what I did. Anyone put C? No, continue C. It makes sense. Well, the thing is, this is called renegotiation. Renegos 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 maybe you said, yeah, let bygones be bygones. What is in the past in the past? Or maybe you said, no, was a cheer, always a cheer. And I'm going to keep punishing him now, no matter what, just a matter of principle. Both of them are available answers. But the problem is, this strategy here that you use to gain perfect Nash equilibrium is not renegotiation proof. examples of real life that are affected by the problem of renego renegotiation. <coughs> well, one case is bankruptcy laws. If we make it really easy for people who went bankrupt uh, to, to get loans again, well, it's, uh, and, uh, and to make easier payments, uh, it's nice because those people, they, they probably can get new payments, get new business started, and uh, they probably can pay their own loans. But then also give incentives to people to not pay in the first time. Bankruptcy laws keep changing because of that in this country and in several places in the world. 
The other example are countries that are in debt. Countries are out of debts. If you forgive the debts of the country, that's very nice. But then the countries know that they're going to have their debts for, forgiven. And they have incentives to, to not pay in the first time. There's a huge history of uh, African countries, uh, American countries, especially Argentina, not paying their debts uh, and getting renegotiating over and over again. Also, if you have a cheating boyfriend, the boyfriend says, I'm sorry, honey, I made a mistake, but I know it's changing. You know, uh, I really love you, we shouldn't love each other, we still love each other. You know, if, you, if, you, if your boyfriend can talk you out of that, and he thinks that he can talk you out of that, he has more incentive to cheat in the first time. So this is a real warning. And I call this guy that was given five minutes today, although I'm kind of in a rush. So I have five minutes now in the club, then I'm going to talk about it. <laughs>
okay? And if the outcome of both of them is heads, the game ends. Otherwise, the game continues. Okay? So just write down what we do, Sasha and Sis. Well, which one is heads? You want the pictures, guys? So that one thing follows and I have like a both of them. I think you read the bottom. What? Here's the bottom. And it's just the head. The one of the what is this guy? The big face is the is the head. Okay. So Sasha and Z, did you did you write that one during the first period? Okay, what did you do? And you? D. So we have D and D here. Let's see if we'll play this game again. You can play for a while. Mathematical review. 